The works was very quiet, save for the quiet grumbling of its single engine. Sir Handel was sulking. Ever since Scarlowy had gone away to be mended, he and Peter Sam were doing all of the work. He'd been asked to take a passenger train and had grumbled dreadfully all the way. These coaches, they were not like the coaches from his old railway, not the ones he was used to. To him, they were simply cattle trucks with their single axle and wheel. Real coaches, he would say, had bogies, and this railway had none. They'd grumbled and shrieked all the way up the line. At the top station, he'd left his train at the platform to get a drink from the water column. When he backed down to couple up to his coaches, his driver hadn't noticed a crate that had slipped off the porter's trolley and fallen on the line. The coaches had noticed, but they didn't say anything. They were cross with Sir Handel and wanted to pay him out. He'd hit the crate and managed to lever himself off the rails. He smashed into the station platform, damaging his rear wheels. Now he was in the works, alone and frustrated. Those blasted cattle trucks! I'll be sure to teach them a jolly good lesson when I next see them. Maybe the thing controller will get some real coaches for a change. They are real coaches, even if they don't look like it. The voice made Sir Handel jump. He looked over to the standard gauge line next to him. A big, red tender engine pushing a single coach was backing down into the sidings. But this engine didn't have a number on its tender, just the letters LNWR. The coach had two axles, was painted cream and white with yellow lining like the express coaches. As the engine came alongside, it looked down at Sir Handel. Both engine and coach were covered in grime and dirt. To see an impressive red engine with a coach looking this shabby, it was honestly shocking since it was known that the NWR took care of its engines. Why not this one? The engine spoke again. Coaches come in many shapes and sizes, my dear engine. You wouldn't like me calling you a toy, would you? N no Sir Handel said, gathering his courage. Because I'm not a toy! But you are too small to be an engine such as me. So by your logic, you must not be a real engine. Sir Handel was getting annoyed. I am a real engine! I pulled the express trains on my old line, but those cattle trucks- Coaches. The engine corrected. They let me have an accident. That's why I'm here in the works now. It's all their fault. Sir Handel grunted. The engine sighed loudly. It sounded like it was finding the smaller engine infuriating to listen to. Be happy. That is the worst you've gotten from a coach. Coaches are to be respected, only bumped when they themselves misbehave and are awkward during passenger runs. Mistreat your coaches without calls, and they will mistreat you. Rubbish! Oh, then I guess no one has ever told you. The engine said, a cold smirk forming on his face. Told me what? Oh, nothing. Just something I've heard. And it's too late for stories. You wouldn't. Yes, I would! What was I supposed to be told? The big engine grinned a little wider, steam hissing quietly from his pistons. Despite this engine's red paint, Sir Handel felt it should have been painted blue from the cold feeling he was getting from this engine. I suppose I could tell you a story that no one ever really talks about on this railway. Not that I'm surprised. It's a bit of a mystery, but if you insist, then I'll tell you. And so, the engine began. The Northwestern Railway had just been formed. The expansive line, reaching from Vickerstown to the end at Tidmouth, was going through a tough few years. The line's first two engines were too small to handle the workload. As such, the board of directors had brought many more engines on loan from other railways to help. And I'm sorry to say, 
Frictions existed as the loaned engines treated the resident engines quite poorly. Oi, you. Take me, coaches, and up to it. Up to it yourself. I'm getting this train ready. Thomas scoffed. <laughs> Typical little shunter. No sense of duty. Late again! I thought you were supposed to be an express engine! Another engine weeshed as Edward clanked into the station. Don't blame me. It was a faulty signal. Edward huffed out of breath. Of course, it's always something else. You wouldn't have this kind of mess on the GER if the board of directors had any sense of progress and allow head office to oversee everything. Another engine was a large Clawton from the LNWR. This engine had glistening red paint with black side plates. This engine, named Afton, was more picky about the kinds of coaches he was given. He saw all the old single-axle Victorian rolling stock as relics. Like the other visiting engines, he was absolutely appalled at the idea of pulling goods trains, because to see a grand engine such as him doing so was an insult. One morning, Afton huffed into the station. He was to be pulling the local stopping service today. But as he neared the station, he hissed angrily as he saw the coaches he'd been given. He was given the small single-axle coaches. While they were painted in the NWR cream and dark green, they were smaller and older than the bogey coaches given. What's this? Oh, I'm pulling this ghastly groaning train today? The indignity of it all! Just be happy you have a train to pull at all! Thomas hissed as he pushed the coaches up. I've had to hunt the yards for extra coaches! Then you can jolly well take these coaches away and bring me some proper coaches! I'm busy! Take them or leave them! Thomas huffed and hurried away into the yards before Afton could say anything more. Eh, come on old boy, let's get this over with. Afton's driver sighed. The coaches groaned as Afton backed up to them. They had heard what Afton had called them and were not happy. Who is this rude engine? asked the lead coach. An improper engine if he's pulling us, said another. I'd rather be pulled by Edward or even Thomas. At least they are proper engines who know how to treat coaches right. The brake coach added. Shut up! I am a proper engine! Better than Tiny Thomas or Old Iron Edward! Now come along! The guard's whistle blew and Afton huffed out of the station in a rage. His face was almost as red as his paint. As Afton raced down the line, the old coaches groaned and creaked. They were older and were not used to running at express train speeds. They tittered nervously as they rolled along. Slow down! Slow down! They wailed. Shut up! Shut up! Afton barked back. Just then, the brakes on the train came on. Afton stopped suddenly on the viaduct, grumbling dreadfully. An investigation of the coaches showed that the coach just behind the engine had a loose vacuum hose. While the crew set about fixing the problem, Afton fumed angrily. He thought the coaches were doing that on purpose, making him late. Eventually, the brakes came off and the train puffed away. When Afton arrived at the last station, the big red engine hissed mournfully as he moved around the yard to shunt his own coaches away. The coaches tittered grumpily as he did so. At last, the journey is over, one said. I felt like my windows were going to fall out, said another. At least you two were further away from him than I was. I had to endure his groaning all the way here, said the lead coach. 
it would have been better if you'd not decided to hold me up, you rotten old intake. What? You blame me for that? That was your fault. Pull the other one, you horrid thing. It's not my fault you don't know how to pull coaches, you rotten red sausage. Afton quickly lost his temper. His boiler pressure shot up, and amid the hiss of his safety valve, there was a bang, and then a splintering crunch. Afton hadn't been paying attention when he'd entered the carriage sidings, and had run his coaches into the buffers hard. The buffers were bent and broken, but they were not the most damaged. That honor belonged to the coach behind Afton's tender. It was squashed between him and the second coach, crushed into a pile of splintered wood and bent metal. The other coaches shrieked in horror at the fate of their sister. Afton just sniffed indignantly. This is what you get for being weak, old antiques. If you only been proper coaches, this wouldn't have happened. The directors were not happy with Afton's carelessness. One of them, a man named Topham Hat, spoke the most severely. If you were our engine, I'd send you away. Afton just sniffed. He didn't care at all. He watched as the broken coach was loaded into some trucks to be taken away. The other coaches were silent during the whole process. After a while, Afton just smirked and backed away to the sheds to rest. Afton's driver was assigned to another engine to learn how to properly handle coaches and Afton himself was shut up in the shed for a few weeks before the directors allowed him to pull trains again. The other visiting engines were the only ones to show any sympathy for his careless handling. During his stay in the shed, a new train was offered by the Northwestern Railway. It was a late night train that offered an express run to Tidmouth, called the Midnight Special. The bigger tender engines enjoyed the job immensely. The idea of a non-stop run from one end of the island to the other under the stars made them feel very important. Soon it was Afton's turn to pull the midnight special. About time I had a named train of my own to pull, and with proper coaches, and no less. The only thing better would be the express, he said loudly. The other engines just groaned. They ignored the big red engine's boasting until he left the shed. Afton puffed into the station, bubbling with excitement as he coupled up to the lead coach. He was so excited that he never looked back once at the rank of coaches he was pulling. No one noticed the coach closest to the engine didn't belong in the consist. It was painted cream and green, just like the express. But it was smaller and had no bogies, just two axles. It was filthier and didn't look like a coach belonging on a prestigious train such as the Midnight Special. The guard blew his whistle and the train set off. Over the sound of the engine puffing, there was a loud groaning noise that came from the lead coach. It sounded like it hadn't been oiled in a long time. Soon, the express passed under the signals and was gone in a cloud of steam. A phone rang in the signal box at Kelsthorpe Road. When the signalman answered it, it was a call from the signalman at Kildane. He wanted to know if the midnight special had passed through to check that the system was still operating. The Kelsthorpe signalman said he'd received a bell from the Crovensgate signal box a long time ago, but the express hadn't come yet. He checked his watch. The express was running half an hour behind. Just before the signalman could hang up the phone to call Crovensgate to send a work train to check the line, there was a knock at his door. 
He opened it to see the Midnight Special's guard standing there, panting heavily. Eh, have you seen our engine? He asked. What engine? No engine has passed by my box for over an hour. The guard then went pale. That's, that's not possible. You must be mistaken. I've just come from the Midnight Special, and I've not seen our engine anywhere. Always swear me mother's head no train puffed past this signal box. I would have seen it. Come on, man, you're speaking all kinds of rubbish. I am not. Our entire train is missing its engine. It's like it's disappeared into thin air. Come on, mate. Have a cup of tea and explain what you're trying to say. A works train was soon dispatched from Croven's Gate. They found all six express coaches sitting on the main line neatly and the irate passengers. From passenger testimony, they said one moment the train was rolling along smoothly, then, after the tunnel, the train went slower and slower until the coaches ground to a halt. When they looked out the window to see what the problem was, they saw there was no engine at the front of their train. Workmen investigated the coaches for damage, but none was found. The coupling on the lead coach was intact. While the works engine pulled the train back to the station, the workmen searched up the line. Perhaps the engine had derailed somewhere before Kelsthorpe, and the guard just missed it. However, nothing. No trace of an engine, or even an accident, could be found. The engine crew was found the next morning, asleep on a bench at Croven's Gate by a cleaner making the rounds before the first service of the day. When asked how they got there, they had no memory of what happened after their engine entered the tunnel. Just that, one minute they were entering the tunnel, and the next they were waking up on the platform. A massive search was held to look for the engine, but nothing could be found. For a long time, the Midnight Express was discontinued as the more superstitious passengers refused to ride the Express after midnight, worried that if a whole engine could vanish, then why not a whole train of passengers? The mystery deepened when many of the passengers expressed concern for the people who might have gotten in the first coach. The investigators noted that all the coaches were still on the train, but the passengers were insistent that a coach was missing from the express, a small coach just behind the engine. Station staff, porters, and the engine crew of the shunder who assembled the train were just as adamant that they had gathered the rake of six express coaches, no more, no less. After extensive investigations, relief was brought to the passengers to hear that everyone who'd bought a ticket for the Midnight Express was accounted for. But the mystery remained. What happened to the engine and the alleged coach? How could an engine's crew wake up at a station with no memory of how they'd gotten there? To this day, the file remains in the Vickerstown Police Files as unsolved. And that is the end of the story as the wider public knows. Though there have been tales of engines seeing this afternoon, puffing along the line in the distance with a single coach behind him. But no one can be certain what they saw was real or not. The engine finished. Sir Handel stared up. His frames felt as cold as ice. He gulped and began to rally his courage. Pre preposterous I've never heard of such a thing. Are you calling me a liar? The big grid engine asked, glaring down at the smaller engine. N no I'm not! I'm just saying that just doesn't happen! Ghosts don't exist, and coaches certainly can't do that either! The big grid engine looked down at her handle before sniffing and looking up. Even without the engine looking down, his voice still made her handle shudder. Deny it all you want, little engine. But heed my warning, even something as humble as a coach does not take kindly to be mistreated. They have their ways of getting even. And a simple matter, such as death, won't offer protection from retribution. Whatever, big engine. Anyways, it's late and- I have a name, you know. You impudent little bug. Oh, and what is that then? Afton.
Suddenly, the coach creaked loudly. The red engine, Afton, gave a heavy sigh. I've rested long enough. I must be going. We must keep time, you know. Sir Handel blinked as his own words echoed back at him. The big engine hissed steam and slowly pulled out of the sidings, the coach creaking and groaning as it was dragged behind. Soon, it vanished beyond the gloom of the yard lights and was gone. Sir Handel thought about the story for a moment before he sniffed. That engine's talking a lot of nonsense. Before long, he closed his eyes and fell asleep. Sir Handel's repairs didn't take too long, so he was soon back to pulling trains. His first job was to pull a passenger train, because Peter Sam was up taking slate from the quarry. He clanked crossly to the yard and coupled up to the coaches before dragging them to the platform. Gordon was waiting there. What's got your pistons in a fizzle this morning? He asked as Sir Handel hissed mournfully into the station. It's these wretched coaches! They let me have an accident the day before, and then last night, some stupid red engine talks nonsense about taking care of them. James wouldn't know how to take care of coaches, being a mixed traffic engine. Gordon huffed indignantly. James? No, I'm talking about that other red engine. Gordon raised an eyebrow. We only have one red engine. We don't have another red engine. Yes, you do. Afton. Afton? Hmm... Now that is a name I have not heard in years. Why is that? He worked on our line for a while, even after I came to Sodor. Then one day, he was just gone. People said he just vanished. But I think he was just sent away after he left his coaches on the main line. Good riddance. Now it was Sir Handel's turn to be confused. But I saw him! Last night! My dear engine. Afton has never been on this island for almost 32 years, let alone been seen since. Just then, the guard's whistle blew, and the big blue engine huffed away, leaving Sir Handel with his thoughts. How could he see an engine that hadn't been on Sodor in so long? Then he remembered the story. A sudden chill ran down his saddle tanks as it all became too clear. It wasn't possible, indeed, to see an engine that hadn't been on Sodor in so long, and in such a shabby condition. Unless it hadn't really been there. The guard's whistle blew, and Sir Handel puffed away with the coaches, without so much as a complaint. Sir Handel has become a more even-tempered engine since then. Though he does still grumble about doing extra work, he has never used the words cattle trucks in the presence of the coaches again. The coaches, for their part, have just left the reason for the change alone. Why ruin a good thing, they say. Though on certain nights, just after midnight, the sound of an engine puffing past with one coach in tow can be heard, a flash of red can be seen. And then, in the blink of an eye, the engine is gone into the night. Gone. Without a trace.